Good morning. This is uh, Passover week, and it's the week that we celebrate what Jesus has accomplished for each of us and the uh, amazing way he poured his love out on us and proved his love once and for all and forever. And so um, we're out here. It's, it's around 7 in the morning, and it's a beautiful day. And uh, it's easy to be mindful of those women going to the tomb early in the morning to check out uh, whether there'd be anybody to move the stone, whether they'd have to deal with the soldiers or whatever. And then the kind of surprise that they must have had and just pure delight and, and the too good to be true news that Jesus was alive. But to uh, back that up a little bit, scriptures clearly taught that he would be the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. In fact, John said that to his disciples. Scripture says he was the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. And all that's based on the Passover Lamb, which is those first three feasts that Jesus came and and fulfilled completely that were based on the exodus from Egypt. And most all of you know the story that that last plague was the uh, the loss of the firstborn in Egypt and how Moses told the Israelites to take a lamb without spot or blemish into their home for several days. And then on the day of Passover, they were to sacrifice and to eat that lamb. They were to put the blood on the doorposts and the lintel, sort of figuratively making a cross. And then when the death angel went through that night, they passed over, the death angel passed over those dwelling places of the Israelites where the blood was shown. And out of that came three memorial feasts. One was the Feast of Unleavened Bread because they were supposed to be eating in haste so they weren't supposed to wait for the bread to rise and that yeast became symbolic of sin. And so later as they commemorated with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it symbolized uh, yeast being taken out of their, their bread was sin being taken out of the camp which Jesus did. He took sin out of the camp. He carried sin and he was buried. He took it out. And then of course the Passover lamb and the, the death angel passing over and Jesus shed his blood as the lamb of God without spot or blemish so that we could have life eternal. And then of course Right after that was what they called the Feast of First Fruits, and Scripture teaches us that Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. So those uh, early feasts that are sometimes just lumped together and called unleavened bread or sometimes called Passover, Jesus literally fulfilled those. And what Moses had established was simply a foreshadowing of what Jesus would do. Even Abraham taking Isaac up on Mount Moriah um, there was a ram caught in the thicket, so there was a ram that took the place of Isaac to teach us that the Passover lamb, the ram of God, would come and take our place, and we would receive his blessing while he received our punishment. So today, um, this very significant time on God's calendar, the Feast of Passover, literally what we call Easter or Resurrection Week or Resurrection Sunday, uh, that sort of takes Christmas and totally fulfills it all with what we celebrate as Easter. I want to read a few scriptures that I'll just focus on Jesus as the Lamb. And uh, won't talk much in between. I'll just read through these and then talk a little bit more and uh, hope it blesses you. This is John chapter 1 verse 29. I just referred to this. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, 
the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Then this is Acts chapter 8, verse 32. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. The first part of this verse talks about unleavened bread, in fact. But the verse ends with, For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. And then there's so many scriptures in Revelation referring to Jesus as the lamb. And this, these are just a few. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 10. After this I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Well, probably 10 and 11. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over them by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Revelation 17, 14. They will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them because He is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and with Him will be His called, chosen, and faithful followers. And this last one is from Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 9. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. One of the uh, scriptures that just always is so figural, not just at this time of the year, but like all the time, uh, always comes to me, especially during communion, what Isaiah said. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised or crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was on him, and by his stripes, scourging we were healed and he did all that so that we can have life so that death will pass over us so that by his blood we can be victorious and in fact he now makes us a bride a glorious bride without spot or wrinkle or blemish and so uh, just wish you the very best today resurrection day and uh, I'll close now with prayer. Lord, we just thank you and praise you and glorify your name for what Jesus has done for us, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
We thank you for life. We thank you for every promise you've given us and how every promise is fulfilled in Christ. And we say amen to that. Bless this, uh, this day. Bless this time of year. We agree with you for a great harvest and a great awakening, not, not just here among us, but in our country and in the world. And we just freely admit that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's our Savior and our Lord and our King. And we give you all the praise and all the honor and all our thanks. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. From the property. <laughs>